please welcome Abby Lee Miller. <laughs> Abby. Oh, thank you, yes. thank you. All right, Abby. And thank you for being so very kind Abby, during my staycation. Abby, I hear we're big in prison. Oh, you're it. <laughs> you are it, yes. Hello, convicts. Yes. Um, it's good to see you back on Dance Moms. Thank you, it's yeah. good to be here. Yeah. When you were in, I was saying, there is no show without you. I think they had other people hosting it, Nicole yeah. uh, Schoschenberger. Yeah, yeah, I like her, I, look, I like the other people, but there's nothing like Abby yeah. for that show. Yeah. Are you happy to be back on the show? Yes, I'm happy to be back on the show. I'm happy that I'm working. I'm in my zone, yes. and I had to prove it to myself yeah. that I could still do it. Yeah, and you're meaner than ever. Not, but not that, really. Well, you know what? Not really. No, well, you know what? I take that back. You are as consistent yes. as ever. Yes. You know, you have not slowed down. Because yeah. a lot of people would think that prison might have humbled you, or <laughs> your current situation, and we'll talk about that in a moment, might have humbled you. But Well, I, I don't think it, people don't really change. Your genetic makeup is That's what with I you at birth. Yes. That's what Situations I say. Situations change, or locations change, but you don't really change. And I think that, uh, you know, going to prison, it, it doesn't soften you, it hardens you. Are you kidding? Well, okay. Look, look, look. You know, do you know how many guards said, where is that dance mom lady at? And I was like, you don't need the preposition at the end of the question. Wait, you got a harder, you had a tougher time with the guards than the, the fellow inmates? Oh, absolutely. The other women were wonderful. I heard that Some they didn't let you wear lashes. They tried to rip my extensions, extensions off. My extensiones de pestañas off. Hello. Yes. Now, why was that? Why didn't you just say they're growing from your skull? Like, why? Well, like, I did. I said, ouch, stop. Yes. Yes. And my piece of paper, you're allowed to go in with one eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper with all of your contacts on it. And, you know, emails, phone yes, numbers. Yes, yes, yes. Mine went missing in five minutes. Wow, so the actual prison system was mean to you. They were ready for me. I had heard from other women that for three months prior to my arrival that it was the buzz. And so while, right before you went in, you got the gastric sleeve. I did. And I was monitoring you. Like I talked about I, you I, while I, you were in. I know, and I appreciate yeah, that. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, so, so yeah. then you lost a bunch of weight. I, I lost 127 pounds. Good for you. Uh -huh. You should have had me on then, because I looked really good then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I read 150 books. Really? I laid in the sun. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And then eight months, and then you get out. Well, it was, should have been four months. Okay. Then it was two more months, then two more months. And during that time, they took me off, the prison doctor took me off all of my medication for what my we, thyroid, for... Uh, metformin for diabetes, cold turkey, everything. Wait, you have to take a thyroid pill every day to maintain. I have got thyroid you do, disease. But because I lost the weight, oh, you don't need it anymore. Oh, you're not diabetic anymore. Oh, you're done. But in actuality, you were still being affected by those two Absolutely. things. Absolutely. So were you suing? Well, I've never sued anyone in my life, ever. Oh. They left three sponges in my dad during uh, esophageal surgery. Yeah. And I regret that. Because, you know, maybe had I done that, I would have never gone bankrupt. I would have never had all those mistakes happen during that time, and I never would have gone to prison. So yeah. I, I don't know. I, I think I need to do what's right for me, and I'm still discussing that. I have a few more months to figure Mom it out. Mom and Dad have not passed on. Yes. And you have no children of your own. Correct. And no siblings. No. So, Abby, it's, it's us and her against the world. That's it. Me and you. Me and yeah. you against the world. Yeah. Yes. Abby, explain what kind of cancer you have because when I heard about it, I said, is this woman ever going to get a break, you know? And it's a very rare cancer. Go ahead, Abby. Yes, it's called Burkitt lymphoma and it's commonly found in little boys under the age of 10 in Africa. And it grows very rapidly from three weeks to six, eight weeks. I had it maybe five or six weeks, but from three to eight weeks, if you get to eight weeks, you're dead. Okay, so... How did you discover this? 
Well, I went to six different doctors in 10 days. But why were you going to the doctors? Like, were you in pain? Were you... Yes, I, it started with, I thought I had a sinus headache. Okay. So I needed a Z pack. Uh, then my jaw was numb. I went to a dentist who did an ice cube test on every tooth, which okay. I'd never had before. And then I was admitted to the hospital and I was there for three days. They said they found nothing. They didn't do any testing. It was crazy. I went back the next day to the emergency room okay. with the same symptoms. Uh -huh. By now, I have a severe pain in the back of my neck, okay. my upper back. My arms are like flailing around like a crazy person. Okay. I can't sit down. I can't sit. I can't go to the ladies' room. I can't lay in the bed. I can't stand in the shower. Like I constantly have to be moving. I was in pain. It was starting to blind me. Pain. Okay. And then you were diagnosed with this particular No, then pain. I went to another doctor, a spine surgeon, who's okay. wonderful, who met Melamed. Went to him. He put me in the hospital to have a... Uh, yeah. Yeah. I was skinny. So... He put me in the hospital to have an MRI was to be sedated. Uh -huh. And even though I was in the machine and I was sedated, my arms and legs were still moving, so they had to take me out. So it was inconclusive. So and you got so, the final diagnosis. And well, well, I ended up, let's just say, in 24 hours, I was in intensive care, paralyzed from the neck down in the fetal position. You had a lot of chemo. 10 rounds, 24 hour a day bags, six days straight. And then a spinal tap with the needle this long in your spine, shooting it up around your brain, and 10 Abby. times. Okay, Ten. Abby, are you cancer free now? I am cancer free. Good for you. Thank you. Thank you. So now, but let me just say, I was cancer free after the third round. Okay. Then why'd they keep doing it? Uh, you tell me. Just to be sure. You didn't have a medical proxy, nobody who was looking I did. Up. I had a wonderful oncologist that came on board. He is Dr. Lawrence, Lawrence Pirro. He is, he was Farrah Fawcett's doctor. He's uh, Shannon Doherty's doctor, mm -hmm. and he's a genius. He's wonderful. So now you're in a wheelchair, and this is as a result of the spinal part? This is the result of the cancer or the lymphoma choking my spinal cord. Will you be able to walk again, Abby? Well, I can move. Good. All right. So, Good. Yes. Good. Now, that picture right there that we're looking at, uh, you know, you're being held up by braces and things like that. Um, do you exercise on a regular basis to try to be able to walk? Yes. Or, or? Uh, flexibility is key to stay flexible. Yes. Think about putting your own shoes on. Uh, we know Tying flexibility around I here. I mean, it's crazy. Yes. <laughs> okay. And also uh, strength. You know, when you're laying in a hospital bed for that long, you just become lethargic and your, your muscles atrophy. And so you lose all your strength. And, and I have really a really bad right knee. I needed knee replacement. 10 years ago, and I kept putting it off at the show. Oh, 13 more episodes. Well, I must tell you, season. under the circumstances, I mean, she looks really, you look fantastic. <laughs> now, I always ask you this, because I always ask you this, because I feel like, and, and you know, do you have love in your life now? Do you have a boyfriend? No. Are you shopping? No. <laughs> I think I need to take care of myself. Get into Abby. Before I can take care of somebody else. Yeah. Well, I have to tell you something. It's really wonderful to see back on the show. And you know, and I, I watch the show, I'm a, I'm a fan. I don't care about dancing, but I like Abby screaming at the kids and stuff. <laughs> look, look, look. And what I get from the show, only because we know Abby, Abby, is a, you're a lovable person. And I bet you the girls that you teach love the heck out of you. Well, they do until they're- Look you know, at that picture, that's gorgeous. Thank you, isn't it? And I bet you the moms are a bigger headache than the, than, than the girls. Well, I think there's a, the problem comes in when the children get too close to me. Oh. And it's, well, Abby said this, well, Abby said that, well, we have to do this because Abby said, I think the mother kind of starts to resent me yeah. in the relationship that yeah. we have. Yeah. Yes. Well, we love you here. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Well, good luck. Dance Moms, everybody, airs Tuesday nights at nine on Lifetime.